from history. Welcome, history hounds and time-traveling tourists, to another episode of Weirdos from History, where we dust off the annals of antiquity to bring you the quirkiest characters that time forgot. Today we're unfurling the scroll on a man whose imagination was as untamed as a wild mustang in a china shop. The one and only Charles Fourier, a fellow who fancied a future where passions were as free as birds and oceans as sweet as summer lemonade. Born on April 7, 1772, in Besançon, France, young François-Marie Charles Fourier was the apple that fell far from the family tree. His father, a cloth merchant, probably hoped little Charles would weave himself into the family business, but our boy had threads of a different color in mind. Fourier's childhood was a tapestry of classical education, but by the time he was a teen, the French Revolution was cutting a swath through the old social fabric. Charles, with his nose in the air and disdain for the merchant class, found himself in a stitch he had to take up the trade or lose his inheritance. Oh, the horror! During the tumultuous 1790s, Fourier played a game of cat and mouse with the revolution, siding with the counter-revolutionaries in Lyon. He nearly danced the guillotine's waltz in 1793, but managed to slip away, proving that even the most peculiar of cats can have nine lives. By 1794, Fourier was drafted into the army of the Rhine, but his military career was as short-lived as a mayfly's memoirs. Discharged due to illness, he returned to Lyon, where he began to stew in his own pot of peculiar ideas, simmering with a desire to re-season society. Fourier's twenties and thirties were spent in a hodgepodge of jobs, from travelling salesman to correspondence clerk. He lamented his deceitful and degrading duties, yearning for a world where work was as delightful as a day at the fair and as varied as a buffet. In 1808, Fourier published his first book, Theory of the Four Movements, which, despite its grandiose title, sold as briskly as snowshoes in the Sahara. But Fourier wasn't one to let reality rain on his parade. He kept scribbling away his visions of utopia. Fourier's big break came when he inherited some cash and could finally dedicate himself to writing full-time. He penned works like Treaties on Domestic and Agricultural Association, where he laid out his recipe for a society that would make even the most seasoned utopian blush. By the 1820s, Fourier had attracted a small but devoted following, like moths to the flame of his eccentric brilliance. He envisioned communities called phalanxes, where people lived in harmony and work was as attractive as a peacock's plumage. Fourier's phalanxes were to be housed in grand hotels, where the penthouse suite and the ground floor flat were determined by one's job. It was a merry-go-round of occupations, where the distasteful tasks were sweetened with a dollop of extra dough. Our visionary, Fourier, was also a connoisseur of amour, advocating a world where love billowed as freely as the breeze, and everyone could relish the banquet of passion. His introduction of feminism in 1837 was the crowning touch to his social tapestry. But let's not sugarcoat the man. Fourier brought his own batch of bitter brew. His anti-Semitism was as bitter as wormwood, and he harbored some rather unsavory ideas about Jews that leave a bad taste in the mouth of history. Fourier's scientific musings were as wobbly as a jelly on a high wire. He predicted humans would evolve to seven feet tall, grow tails with hands on the tips, and live to the ripe old age of 144. And let's not forget his forecast of a future where the seas would turn to lemonade. A sticky proposition indeed. Despite his bizarre beliefs, Fourier's influence rippled through time like a stone skipped across the pond of posterity. His ideas inspired communities in the United States, from Utopia, Ohio, to the North American phalanx in New Jersey. During his last years in Paris, Fourier was a fountain of fantastical and flamboyant theories. He left this world on October 10, 1837, leaving behind a legacy as colorful and quirky as a circus under a kaleidoscope sky, full of ideas as eccentric and elaborate as a jester's jest. In the end, 
Charles Fourier was a man who dared to dream of a world as wondrous as a fairy tale, where work was play and play was life. His visions of utopia were as outlandish as a unicorn in a business suit, but they sparked imaginations and conversations that continue to this day. So, as we close the book on this chapter of Weirdos from History, we tip our hats to the man who taught us that the future could be as zesty as citrus seas and as harmonious as a symphony of satisfied souls. If you've enjoyed this stroll down the quirky corridors of the past, do tip your quill in the inkwell of interaction, like subscribe or leave a comment below. Until next time, keep your wits sharp and your history weird.